In this video, I'll show you how to build and deploy a recommendation system with BigQuery ML. My name is Polong Lin, and I'm a developer advocate for Google Cloud. From finding the right Halloween costume, getting notified of relevant spooky decorations for your home, the majority of consumers today expect personalization, recommendations of products and services, or content tailored to their interests. And so, in order to better serve the customers, businesses need to be able to train and deploy recommendation systems quickly and effectively to improve conversions, click-through rates, and build customer satisfaction, loyalty, and brand affinity. But to build recommendation systems, you need a place for your data. Google BigQuery is a fully managed, highly scalable data warehouse solution on Google Cloud and comes with lots of great features, especially around storage and analytics. Without needing to move your data out of BigQuery, with BigQuery ML, you can train and deploy machine learning models directly using SQL. That means you've got data storage, analytics, and machine learning all within BigQuery. So how can businesses create recommendation systems quickly and deploy them into their online stores? In this video, I'll show you how to prepare your training data in BigQuery, train a recommendation system with BigQuery ML, use the predicted recommendations in production, and tips and best practices. Let's start with the data. To recommend something to someone, you kind of need to know what they like already. So how do you know what a user likes? In general, there are two ways. If your users directly give you ratings of four and a half stars out of five on a particular product or piece of content, then this is called explicit feedback. The second way is to infer interest indirectly. For example, maybe the more time a user spends viewing a product, the more they're interested in it. Since you're inferring interest indirectly or implicitly, this is called implicit feedback. As implicit feedback tends to be more common in retail businesses, let's build a recommendation system using some sample implicit feedback data from a real online store. The Google Merchandise Store is an actual e-commerce store where people can shop for Google branded shirts, hats, and other products. And a sample of the anonymized Google Analytics data is available as one of the BigQuery public datasets. Based on the store's Google Analytics data, I've cleaned the data so that we can see each anonymized visitor ID, what product they were looking at, and how long they spent viewing the product, which is in milliseconds here. We need these three columns to train a recommendation system in BigQuery ML, the user, the product, and the ratings. So the visitor in the first row, for example, viewed a particular item for 59 milliseconds. And in the second row, uh, a different visitor looked at this item, but for 5,787 milliseconds and so on. So essentially, the more time they spend viewing the product, the higher the implicit rating. With the data ready, to train the recommendation system, we'll be using the matrix factorization algorithm in BigQuery ML. So selecting the data is straightforward here. Select star from the view or table. With the training data, we can now create the model. By specifying a model name like retail recommender in our dataset, BQML, then we specify the options. Model type, which in this case is matrix factorization for recommendation systems, the user column, the item column, and the rating column. And setting feedback type to implicit because the model is trained differently for explicit and implicit feedback. And then with an as, uh, we select the training data. Now, as you execute this query, if you get an error that says training matrix factorization models is not available for on-demand usage, it's because matrix factorization can be quite computationally expensive. So BigQuery is trying to protect you from a potentially hefty bill. To rectify this, you will need to use flat rate pricing. And to learn more about this, follow the guide in the link here. After training is done, you can evaluate your model using select star from ml.evaluate. But you might be wondering what data it's evaluating the model on. When you create a model, BigQuery ML automatically splits the training data into its own training and testing data behind the scenes for you. So this allows you to evaluate your model immediately 
after the model has finished training. Now of these evaluation metrics, average rank, also known as mean percentile rank, is perhaps the most widely used metric for implicit matrix factorization. In general, the lower the average rank, the more closely the predicted recommendations match the behavior in the test set, with 0.5 being random chance and 0 being a perfect prediction. If you're happy with the evaluation metrics, you can now make predictions. To make predictions with BigQuery ML on a single user or set of users to start, you can run select star from ml.recommend, specifying the model you created and the user ID or IDs that you want to make predictions for. To get the top n recommendations, you can order by the predicted confidence descending and limit n. You can also make predictions on all of the users. So you have the top n recommendations for every single user. For example, here we're looking at the top five recommendations for all the users. Note that because the output for predicting the top n recommendations for every single user can actually get quite large, and because we may want to use the results multiple times, it may be better to store the outputs in a separate table that you can reference more easily later. Like here, prod recommendations under the BQML dataset. Now that we have our predicted recommendations, what can we do to use the recommendations in production? One way is to export recommendations for ad retargeting campaigns with Google Analytics. First, by focusing on specific products at a time, you can create a new column for likelihood to purchase this product based on the predicted recommendations. Then you can import your predictions back into Google Analytics to create new campaigns for those products. Another way is by connecting the predicted recommendations with your CRM, like Salesforce. And by doing so, you can create targeted email campaigns to provide relevant products directly to your customers' inboxes. There are even integrations between Google Analytics and Salesforce that you can leverage. You can also export the recommendations to cloud storage, a separate database, or simply read from BigQuery to use in a separate service to serve the recommendations. Now, at this point, I want to cover some tips and best practices, as you might be thinking how you can potentially improve your recommendation systems in production. One question you might have is, what happens to new users? In other words, since matrix factorization can only make predictions on users who belong to the training data, how do you make predictions on users who you don't have any data for? Well, this is actually a common problem called the cold start problem. There are many ways to deal with this, which is outside the scope of this video, but as a simple suggestion, the easiest way would be to show new users items that are sorted by popularity or what products have been trending for the past time interval. Another question you may ask is, how do you recommend items to new users if you know some of their demographic data? One way is to find lookalikes to those new users based on your pool of existing users. For example, given some demographic data for user X, first, compare user X to all of the existing users that you already have recommendations for. Then find the five most similar users, we'll call these lookalikes, to user X based on whatever data you may have, demographic data or otherwise. Then make recommendations to user X based on what these lookalikes would themselves be recommended. To find lookalikes, one way is to use cosine similarity between user X and the other users. Another way that you can find lookalikes is to find the nearest cluster of users and use them as your lookalikes. And you can do this using a clustering algorithm like k-means, which is also available with BigQuery ML. For example, given four clusters of users, we may find that user X is closest in distance to the centroid of these yellow square data points. And so we can recommend to user X products that the user in this cluster would themselves be recommended. Another question you may have is that BigQuery ML does batch predictions very well, but your business may need predictions on a single user at a time, and you need the predictions to be fast. 
In these situations, you can export your matrix factorization models from BigQuery ML and host it for real-time predictions using AI platform on Google Cloud. To learn more about how to host these models for real-time predictions, you can follow this link. So now you should know how to build and deploy a recommendation system with BigQuery ML. Thanks for watching.